Do you want to be a hero? Today we're looking at Biggles, a 1986 computer game from Mirasoft, based around the movie of the same year, Biggles, um, obviously, sometimes known as Biggles, an adventure in time, which in turn is loosely based on the W.E. Johns Biggles books. He's a World War I fighter pilot, adventures 1950s styly, you know the kind of thing. So we launch into the game on the Commodore 64. Uh, this is the first game you get two. The first one's called Time Warp. Not the uh, take a step to the left and then a jump to the right thing. Anyway, there's a tune that goes, do you want to be a hero? And here we are in World War One. I'll explain the plot as we go along because it's confusing. So here we are with Biggles flying along in World War One. But no, look, suddenly we're on a rooftop in 1986. And we're jumping between roofs. Yes, Biggles is a time twin with someone based in the present 1980s day. And here we are in the trenches of World War I. And every time we die, we change between the biplane, running along, and uh, being on the rooftop in present day. So we're back on the rooftops here. And oh, look, I've died again. And yeah. So over to the spectrum. Basically, Biggles is a time twin to someone called Jim Ferguson, who's a catering salesman. And whenever Biggles or Jim is in dire peril, the other one will travel forwards or backwards in time and come and rescue them. Uh, it's all explained to you by Peter Cushing in his last film role, who is living in Tower Bridge. So this first biplane shoot up level is fairly basic. You fly along... You have a limited amount of bombs and infinite amount of bullets. And then you go to the rooftop and you swap between each other. Because there's two of you by pressing fire and pulling down. And you run between the roofs. And when you die, you end up in the trenches of World War One, And then you flip back between them all. Do you see what happens here? Look, I'm deliberately dying to show you. See, we're in the biplane now. Over to the Amstrad. Many Amstrad owners would have got this on one of the early Amstrad Action monthly cover tapes. The game was developed on the Commodore's... Actually, no. The game was developed on the Gemini development system, primarily for the Commodore 64, and then ported the Spectrum and Amstrad CPC. All of that was done by Dali Software. I know this because it's a rather good article in Amstrad Computer User about them. This is what it looks like on an Amstrad GT65 green screen. All looking good. Now, on a Spectrum and Amstrad, this screen, jumping the, between the roofs, is flip screen. And you can't go behind the chimneys and the doorways on the roofs. You go in front of them. And on the C64, it scrolls. And it's very easy to fall off the roof. Same with this level as well. C64, it scrolls. Spectrum and Amstrad, it's flip screen. But it's all very clear on the green screen. So back on to direct capture for my 6128. Grenades are essential to take out the pillboxes where there's machine gun fire. Crash gave the 63%, your Sinclair 71. Sinclair used a 4 out of 5. Zap gave it 48%. Can't find any Amstrad reviews at the moment. And Ben Dagleish did the music on the C64. Now, when you're kneeling down uh, on the rooftop level... The enemies can't see you. You become invisible, which is convenient. Big jump there. Can I get across? Just. So, whenever the person's kneeling down, they can't be seen. No, you can't go behind there. You have to avoid the guards. And the aim is to get to the th end of all three of these levels, where apparently... There's something else you get to play, but I've never got that far, even by cheating. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. I think you have to complete all three levels. You get grenades in the World War One level or on the CPC. Don't waste them on the nickel men. Only use them on the machine gun fire. And you'll learn the distance you need to throw them. 
in the movie, the plot is basically they go back and forth between present day and World War One, and then they take a Jet Ranger helicopter back to World War One and use some kind of sonic weapon for, for reasons I don't understand. It's a very confusing movie. It's a bit of a mess, if we'll be told. And if you're wondering about the flying, well, you get to do that in the second part of the game, which we'll come to. This is a film that gets repeated much. I think Talking Pictures TV had it on a few months ago. It used to get shown on TV a fair bit. And I can only ever remember the bits of the helicopter in Docklands in the old gas works where it's now all luxury flats and they're flying that jet ranger around with a big ball on the side of it that's the sonic weapon. Here we go, we're back into the kind of above the battlefield here and we're back down again in the ground level. It's quite samey. It is quite same. You think you're getting a lot of game for your money. What with the four different games you're in effect getting, because we're going to come to the flying section. And here's what the Spectrum version looks like on CRT running on my Play Plus 2 on an Acorn slash Philips monitor. It is 48k only. And you have a limited amount of bombs on this level. And I'm not sure why it's important, because... There's so many guns on the ground, you don't really seem to be able to replenish your bombs that you get a couple of shots and then basically spend your time avoiding them. This section is quite fluid on the spec. In the Amstrad version, is a little bit slower. The further to the right you get in terms of how many screens long you go, the more, oh, I've dropped, the more, um, well, vicious the machine gunners get. On the C64 rooftop level, so you can see it scrolls. Which changes the game or slightly your technique. You can't run quite as far. Because you go from one end of the screen to the other on the Amstrad and Spectrum. On the C64, it won't let you get quite that far, so you tend to jump roof to roof in roof in turn. The Ben Duckley, and I like that lightning effect. And that's used in the movie to denote time travel, as explained by Peter Cushing. Oh, what an end to that <laughs> illustrious career Biggles was. It's the kind of movie that when you're a kid, it's kind of fun, because there's lots going on. But when you're an adult, you look at it and go, uh, this, is, this is a bit nuts. It's a lot of things tied together, a bit like this game, a lot of things tied together. And this is by no means Ben Dugleish's best music ever. In fact, I'd say it's one of his weakest. Right, there's a pillbox there. But it's okay, I'm dead, so I'm back on the rooftop. And this is how the game goes on, basically. And when you, you, you're supposed to get a code at the end of this, and possibly there's something else. But, yeah, I've not gone that far. So let's load up the second game. Biggles, the secret weapon on the other side of the cassette. It's by Mr. Micro. And I've cheated, because I've been on the tip shop, and the password is, well, there's many passwords. This one's Crow I'm using on the 64, and you are suddenly in a helicopter. Now, this looks similar to another game, doesn't it? Possibly by Mr. Micro, anyway. Strike Force Harrier? Possibly, anyway. Right, the controls are really confusing because they're in really stupid places. So you've got airspeed indicator top right. You've got your altitude and you're heading over to the spectrum. We're flying around. We're supposed to be finding photographs and things on a battlefield, avoiding the red areas and heading towards the blue areas here on the specky. But basically, you will just be shot to death. I think I'm going backwards now. Green screen on the Amstrad. And the soundtrack on the Amstrad isn't particularly good either.
back on the 64. And I'm flying along. It's very hard to find anything. I've not found anything yet. I'm flying at a very low level. Because what I'm trying to do is there is something around here. I'm near that yellow dot. I'm that small yellow dot on the map next to that bigger yellow dot. I'm trying to land and see if there's anything here. So is that something flashing there or is it just bad sprites? I suspect it's just bad sprites. Right, let's bring her down. Landed. Nothing there. Brilliant. And you'll be doing a lot of that. It's not... Considering Tomahawk comes out exactly the same time as Biggles. And that's a brilliant helicopter game. Especially on the Amstrad. Then you're playing this. Yeah. I mean, you have to think that did Mirosoft do the helicopter game originally and think this isn't good enough? We need something else. It seems weird they commissioned two separate games. It's as if they were worried. Because why would you? Why would you spend all that extra development money making two games? Unless you're elite and you're worried your Thundercats game won't come out. All a bit odd. On the Amstrad. No, this is no fun. There's a lot of searching around. You don't really get to shoot anything we can't... You might be able to, but it's... Yeah. Fire buttons doesn't seem to do anything. You're wandering on a big empty battlefield trying to find things. You land where you're supposed to, and there's nothing there. And to be honest, unless you're cheating, you're going to be shot out of the sky pretty quickly. Biggles does fulfill one thing you want from your action movie conversion. It's faithful to the original source. The original source is a complete mess. It's just all over the place. It's a visual spectacle. It caught your eye at the time because of how much was going on. But you look at it today and go, oh my, this isn't very good. The game's strongest on the 64, which is the lead version. But that weak Ben Daglish soundtrack kind of sums the entire thing up as lacklustre. Running along the rooftops is quite enjoyable. The trouble is it gets boring very, very quickly. The run and gun section doesn't really work that well because again, the repetition. It's just the same thing every screen with the occasional machine gunner. And the side on shoot 'em up, again, it's weak. If you took one of these games and just made it stronger rather than having three in the first section of the game, this might be more enjoyable. The Spectrum and Amstrad versions are weaker than the 64. The Amstrad version does chug along and I seem to remember playing on that Amstrad action cover tape and thinking, yeah, this roof jumping section is quite fun, but the rest is poor. The second game, the flight simulator, I laughingly call it a flight simulator, is just boring, dull and empty. Again, one of these games, just take one of these games and develop it properly. Don't just give us three half-baked games in the first part of the game and then a half-baked flight simulator. Just do one of these things properly. There's so many problems. The control layout is awful. Trying to find where you're going, the map, everything. And as I say, Digital Integrations Tomahawk comes out around the same time. And yes, that's a fabulously detailed and enormously fun helicopter flight simulator. And you only need a fraction of that, a fraction of that in this game to make it better. It doesn't work. Do it like Combat Links. Do it like anything else. Oh my, it's just, just horrible. But as I say, Biggles the game is totally faithful to the original movie because it's a visual spectacle, because you think there's an awful lot on offer here. But when you come to analyze it, it's just a load of forgettable fluff. 